So my name is Ed Sullivan, and uh, first, I don't do any impersonations, by the way, which is like the number one question usually everyone asks me. Um, Jeff gave me the coveted after lunch slot, so hopefully I keep you guys entertained uh, enough here to, to stay awake. Um, I am a Vice President of Product Alliances uh, for Salesforce Radiant 6, and I'll tell you a little bit about the company uh, here in a second. Um, but I, what, we're, what I want to present today is actually uh, not really about Radiant 6, but I want to show you we're, we're an OEM uh, customer of, of Lexalytics. Uh, we're actually in an alpha stage of bringing the product into our, uh, into our product as an enhanced sediment tool. Um, I want to talk about, uh, show, I'm going to show you guys how we're actually uh, having that work. I want to talk about the social media space. I know you've heard a couple different uh, presentations already on social media, and we deal with social media every day. It's a... It's so definitely a big data issue. Um, and then I want to show you uh, how some of our clients use it. So we, we're, we're, of course, the user of Radiant 6, but it's more important that we actually build good products uh, for our clients. So I'm going to show you how uh, some of our clients are actually using uh, you know, Radiant 6 or just you, how they're using social media, actually, uh, as a tool uh, going forward. Now, we are part of Salesforce. I, I hate to do this as a, like, a weird, weird formality, but because I'm part of the product team and because I do public presentations here, I need to actually tell you about the safe harbor statement that Salesforce has. Um, Salesforce is built on um, a trust factor that they have in the marketplace. And any forward-looking statements that I make here, which I'm going to show you some forward-looking products, you can't hold me liable for, for it at that point. Um, there, the safe harbor statement is a big Mark Benioff thing, and you can see it actually up on on the uh, Salesforce website. Um, so just a quick snapshot. I know there's, uh, I'm, I'm not a Canadian myself, but I play one on TV. Um, but actually, there's a lot of Canadians in the room, and actually, Radiant 6 is quite a famous uh, company in Canada uh, right now. Um, we were, we're about a six- or seven-year-old company uh, built up in the Maritimes of Canada, which is uh, pretty much as far away from Silicon Valley as you could possibly get. Uh, so uh, we've actually... Uh, over the course of the last uh, six or seven years, have built up a product that actually goes out and helps customers listen to the social media conversations that are happening out there. So all the public conversations, not private conversations, uh, like on Facebook, if it's private, we're not touching that, but it's all public conversations that are happening in social media. Um, we have uh, a focus on the enterprise space itself. Um, so we help our customers bring social data into all components of their operations uh, within their enterprise and all the workflow tools that are associated with that. Um, we have a, close to actually 3,000 customers now. Uh, half the Fortune 500 are using Radiant 6 in some form or fashion. And we are global as well. We, we do support 17 languages currently. We add about two or three languages every quarter. And um, that actually is, a, it, our, our global coverage is actually growing uh, as, as exponentially as the rest of our, our data. So just a quick Snapshot on Radiant 6 if you weren't familiar with, with who we are. Our key products that we work on, our, obviously our foundation product is the ability to go out there and actually listen to social media. Um, so it's going out and actually finding the conversations. And we do that uh, pretty well. I mean, it's, some, say it's, some say it's the best in the market. We're, we're, we like to uh, you know, pride ourselves on the fact that people say that. Um, we, do, we do drive very hard on trying to make sure that we're getting all the data we possibly can um, for our clients. Um, we also focus on analytics of, of the data, and we're going to get deep into the analytics side of things here. Um, we focus on real-time engagement of, of conversations. So that's, as you're seeing the market shift, social is actually becoming a communications tool, and we help customers actually do the communications. And then we, of course, help with, with visualizing the data. We help with actually doing reports, and we're also getting very heavy into the mobile applications. So we have a, a pretty wide product suite that we support and we have integrations also with, with different parts of Salesforce as well. Now, as far as uh, what we do you know, specifically and where things actually are, we, we see things moving or where things are moving, um, is social is actually kind of bridging across the entire enterprise. It's not just marketing and PR where it traditionally was, but it's being used in customer service, it's being used in HR, it's being used in legal, it's being used in product management, brand management, Virtually every major operations within an organization uh, are actually using social in some form or fashion. And what we're, what we're doing is trying to provide a conduit to bring social into those, those different departments and provide it so that one, a company can come in and subscribe to data in a certain way um, and then be able to uh, 
use it, use it in their different viewpoints of how they want to actually use it within their department, whatever their strategies happen to be. So we're at a point right now in, in the market evolution where people are actually saying, you know, what, what do we actually, why should I listen to social, which was the old question, to now saying, okay, how do I actually build a social strategy? But it's pretty evident right now that, that right, yeah, as far as data goes, um, there's a lot of conversations going on. I mean, everything about anything, I mean, going on in social. It could be about brands, could be about personal stuff. But the number of tweets, the number of Facebook mentions that go, basically growing exponentially at this point in time, plus blogs and all the other forms of, of social content. It's a great video, which I'll, I'll put out on Twitter, actually, um, that talks about the volume of data coming in. It's uh, some other gentleman created this little video. And it's a really cool video. I don't have time to show it to you today, actually. As we look at what Radiant 6 um, is doing from an uh, ingestion point of view, we're collecting about 12 billion social posts every month right now for our clients, and it's growing quite dramatically. It's, you know, it, uh, last year in, in July, of the, it was about 9 billion, so we're actually grown, you know, 25% um, just in the amount of volume coming in from a social media conversation. And we index that content for our clients. So you can see a, kind of a chart of the, the growth of actually ingestion and indexing um, and some of the statistics around that. But the, the, the fact of the matter is actually that it's a big data issue. Um, social is becoming a huge pile of data. A lot of it's crap, and excuse my language here, but, you know, it, but in, that, in that pile is actually a lot of good information. It's basically the world's biggest focus group for a company. Um, it is real customers talking, complaining, wanting help with something. So you're, you're taking all this data together, and you also have a very another unique issue, which is that it's unstructured data. So it becomes very difficult to actually, uh, you know, sit down as a as a company and actually try to figure out where do I go from there. Cus the things that our customers are coming for uh, for for is okay. How do we 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 know that social is actually important? How do we actually scale this? How do we actually make this part of our organization? How do we actually drive this to the right people in the, in the company when uh, it needs to be managed. Um, if it's a real-time situation, you know, how do we get it there as fast as possible so there's little latency between the time someone's mentioned something to the time that they actually are getting serviced. All the way down to deep analytics around what people are saying and, and, and looking at the data in, in different ways. So there's a lot of different uh, use cases that are happening within the social spectrum. And our clients are coming in actually asking us how to, how to actually manage this data in, a, in an efficient manner. So we've actually created, uh, we, we did, ta I should stop, stop and say, we did try to tackle this ourselves at one point. Um, we do have our own sentiment tool, which is a pretty rudimentary sentiment tool, and we realized how difficult that actually is. Um, we changed strategies about two years ago, where we uh, said, you know what, there's a lot of companies out there that are doing um, extraction of data a lot better than we are, um, and Alexalytics being, being one of those companies. And we actually said, you know what, we're, we're better off actually partnering with those companies, opening up our platform, and, and starting to let our customers use those tools natively versus uh, you know, us having to build our own and, and spend an investment on, on continued you know, growth of, of trying to build the, our own engine. So we created our, our product called Insights Platform. And that's where Lexalytics actually um, exists is in, this, is this, in this Insights Platform. Um, some of the, our other vendors, we have kind of a wide selection of vendors that do different things, and we'll continue to grow this, this base. We kind of look at it as like a Radiant 6 app exchange uh, where we give, we're giving customers choice. Um, with Lexalytics, uh, however, we're actually not only allowing them or giving them access to our customer base within the Insights platform, but we're actually OEMing their product um, to basically t eventually take over our own sentiment. Um, so that's a that's uh, a big part of the the development that we're working on with with the Lexalytics Lexalytics folks. So I'm going to I'm going to do something risky here, which is a live demo of data, uh, a li live demo of Radiant Six. Risky in the fact that I don't know what kind of content will show up at the at the different points in time here. So swear words and everything else are probably going to come out here in the raw the raw format. Make sure I'm live here. So I can't show actual customer data, so I created a hypothetical scenario to demonstrate um, how we're using Lexalytics. So in this case, um, I'm doing a, uh, a TV show, The Big Bang Theory, pretending I'm a producer of the, of, the, uh, of the show itself, and what I would actually do, and why do I need to actually uh, parse down this data. So if we look at 
uh, the Big Bang Theory, we, we created what we call a topic profile of the data. And in this topic profile, if you look at the number of posts that have happened around Big Bang Theory, it's 420,000. Yesterday it was 405,000 when I looked at it. Um, so 420,000 uh, pieces of social media content are coming in over the last 30 days of, of uh, around the Big Bang Theory. So if you're sitting there as a producer of a show, you're saying, okay, how do I get through all that data? How do I find out? I want to know two things. How can I build a community around the, the advocates? That's, this is one of my scenarios. And also, how can I actually build my product to be more likable to a wider, wider range audience? But in order to do so, I need to have people sit, put butts in seats and actually dig through 420,000 posts. It's not going to happen. It's just, it's just, you know, at this point in time, it's beyond human reach. So that's where we turn to actually the analytics side of things. So if I click on, on the actual data, th think of this as a, uh, a, a master set of data. I can now start slicing that data into, into a lot of different areas. And I'm going over here to our insights uh, platform. And under, uh, under our OEM part, we're actually calling this enhanced sentiment. And under this uh, enhanced sentiment, I can now start looking at both, not only the, the sentiment itself, but I can also look at uh, some themes that are happening and some key phrases that we want to maybe key around when we're actually looking at this data. So we can get it down to, to manageable manageable level. So first thing I'm going to show you is just general doc, what we call document sentiment. And this is actually just going to give you a you know, pretty much straightforward, neutral, negative uh, number of posts here. And you can actually see, as you look on each one of these, uh, how many posts are actually in each. So we're starting to parse down the data. And with Radiant 6, you can actually not only, once you, once you have uh, a set of data, you can actually now dig into that data further. You can even look all the way down to the social posts themselves. So we're able to start segmenting this down. But this still doesn't mean anything to me, so I'm actually going to go to the enhanced sentiment side of things. Now, I've already created a couple here on the side that I'm, I got going here earlier. So what I've done, if I go over here, I would go through this process where I'd actually say I want to take positive phrases um, using Lexalytics to figure out what are actually the key themes and phrases people are saying around my product. So just for speed purposes, I actually did this ahead of time and made sure it was loaded. The, so what we're doing is we're actually pulling out key phrases around the positive sentiment. So you're looking at people say sometimes say the product's best, some people are saying the product's funny, some people say I love this product or I love this show, um, some people are looking at the good, the comedy, the et cetera, et cetera. So now we're starting to get into kind of the nitty gritty. Where, you know, what are the, if we want to build a community, how do we actually find advocates within this, within this uh, grouping of, of, of uh, social posts that are out there? So if I was going to build a community, I would actually say, okay, let me key in on love. So love, someone loves our, our show. These are people that maybe we want to actually turn to and start you know, looking at an engagement from a uh, you know, community development point of view. Maybe we just want to collect these folks and understand who they are. We can look at all the demographics and all their information around um, their, their, their uh, profiles online and be able to start segmenting down, understanding who exactly our, our customers are. So in this case, if we go to the, lo the love side of things, and I actually want to start looking at some of the, the commentary, I can now look all the way down to now. That's some of the uh, swear words there. But this gives you kind of a, a feel for what exactly people are saying. And you can actually start digging into the data itself, uh, all the way down to the post level. So we've been able to now start building out um, use cases. And if you look back here at the number of posts that are actually in this love section, we're now down to 6,400 posts. We may want to parse this further so it's more manageable. But taking this down from 420,000 posts in the last month. So that's a big jump down, and we actually now can segment the population down based on these, these uh, you know, positive phrases that are, that are happening. Another area is, OK, now I want to see what people don't like about our show. I can now click on and say, OK, I want to look at the negative side of things here. So we come over to Ant Sentiment, and we can look at the negative phrases or themes. So I've clicked on that one. I want to go over this one now. So now let's look at the, the, the negative 
posts here. Now in this case, these are, these are the main phrases that are being pulled out. Now we would further tweak this down here. Big Bang is actually being looked at as negative. Probably the name of the show itself is showing up as a, uh, as a negative here. But now we can actually start digging into all the people, all the, what people are saying. And people are saying it's bad. People say it's shit. People say it's sick. I don't know what vampire means. Uh, <laughs> people say it's stupid, dead, too much. So in this case, I think if I want to, I want to see what people are saying that are stupid. So now I'm getting down into posts here. There's 999 posts. People say it, that's stupid out of that whole set of data. So now we can start looking at what are they actually saying. We can actually look at them. Maybe we want to reach out to them and say, you know, do you mind if I ask you these questions? What do you think is stupid? You didn't really explain it in a tweet because it's 140 characters. Maybe you can actually tell, you know, tell me a little bit more about why you think the show is stupid. What can we do to make, make it appeal to you? So this is what we can start doing with the data. And I, I just wanted to use this as a demonstration that you take a large amount of data. And using the Lexalytics tool, we're starting to you know, provide a cookie crumb trail to what people can actually do with the data. Of course, there's a lot of different strategies that, that happen um, within a company. So, you know, each use case is going to be different. Everyone's going to be, you know, designing their own, their own uh, strategy for execution. And for that point, I just want to, since I used one case, which was actually, you know, if I was a product manager or brand manager, I want to talk a little bit about how we're using insights in an automated fashion. So if you're in a company that particularly is embracing social customer service, um, we actually are creating a tool which has gone GA, uh, general release, um, called Social Hub. That allows us to create a rules engine around the data itself. Um, and that can be pushed into things like our engagement console, it can be pushed into Salesforce, and it can be pushed into other products via our API. Um, it's a rules engine that's taking different uh, elements that people can actually track in. And based on the, the, uh, the rules, and you know, let's just say we want to track negative sentiment or follow certain themes that we, uh, themes and fra key phrases that we've now pulled out of Lexalytics, we can now put that into our rules engine. And now we're able to take a large amount of posts and push that down um, in real time to wherever it's needed in, within that, that company. And just for some, some quick uh, examples of that, you know, I want to make sure I, I'll, I'll just touch on these briefly because I have a limited amount of time here. Um, one of our, our big European customers is KLM Airlines. Um, they, are, they have totally rewired their entire company. The way they operate is all built around social now. Um, they've taken social to um, a customer service or customer care's point of view and built a command center in the, uh, in, near the Amsterdam airport where their headquarters is. Uh, they've actually started looking at how do we actually bring that into our native infrastructure around customer service because their customer care team of about 40 people based in Amsterdam is not scaling globally, so now they need to tap into their worldwide operations. Um, they actually have an SLA right now that they want to respond to, to, to you know, negative comments uh, from their customers or people that need help within an hour's time. They're trying to get that down to five-minute SLAs. Uh, so working around data and latency and trying to get through the data, data faster. Um, but they have a strong belief that, that, that social media is the future for their company. And they want to basically, uh, as they've told me uh, you know, directly in terms of what their goals are, is they want somebody standing in line whose flight's just been canceled. And they're tweeting about how much they hate KLM. They want to be able to engage that person. And before the person gets to the counter to get their new flight changed, they want to have already taken care of that problem, get the person on another flight. So that's the type of thing that mindset they have. And it's also moving into other unexpected parts of the company because if somebody complains about a flight attendant or complains about a, a service agent, uh, they can track back to who that person was within their, within their own operation. And it's causing, I don't want to call it paranoia, but it's causing people to step up to the fact that this is social, that people are complaining online, and that they actually have to, they, if they want to work for KLM Airlines, they need to always have a, a positive outlook. So they're... Their, their whole culture of their company is actually shifting within uh, the context that social is actually becoming a conduit. It's not the only one, but it's, it's one of the communication channels that actually is out there, but it's a very public communication channel. Um, we have a lot of customers that are building what, what we call social media command centers. Um, these are becoming central hubs, almost like knock centers uh, in a, in a uh, call center type of format where they're able to take data and actually visualize it and make sure that they're managing all the rules engines and everything else and 
oftentimes even doing the customer cares triaging. Uh, so we have a number of command centers that have been built around uh, the notion of how do we actually get data to flow through the company. So taking the analytics side, once again, makes it really important as you're getting into more real-time environments um, to be able to get through that big you know, pile of data and find out that, that needle in the haystack and get it to the right person. One of the companies that actually is using, uh, that has just launched a command center is American Red Cross. So now I want to look at how does a nonprofit you know, use this, not just a major corporation. Um, so a nonprofit, they're actually saying, they're, they're realizing things like Twitter um, and Facebook and other forms of content are actually starting, or media types are starting to precede even the news. Um, so they can find out when, when an earthquake's happening, they can find out when a flood's happening, a fire's happening, a disaster's happening. And they're listening to a, a very large set of data. They, they have topic profiles that are just massive. Um, they're listening for earthquake, tornado, fire, and you can imagine how much social media content comes in there. It's not about a brand, it's about an actual event. So how do they parse that down? And that's where they're taking analytics and be able to sort through all that. It's millions and millions of posts every day that they have to sort through, and a small group of people that could, are actually managing this, this uh, command center. Um, then we have other types of, uh, similar types of engagements. You'll see uh, there's, there's a big theme right now about social customer service. Um, so uh, companies like, like TD Bank are actually using this. Once again, I wanted to, I had a, a you know, thousand case studies to go through to figure out which ones I wanted to present here. But this shows you they're getting tw uh, 20,000 mentions a day around all their brands. So how do we actually help them get to the, the, the root of what they need? And they're taking the, the analytics tools that we have to parse that down. And then if you go into some, this is one of my favorite ones because uh, I'm an advocate of their brand. Um, this, is, this is actually a, a more of a marketing side. So this is a CPG company that doesn't even have direct customers. They sell everything through, through distribution. So how do you actually now uh, engage your customers? And of course, they have their, all their social media strategies, but they need to now take all that information that's coming in here and be able to sort it down and also do the real-time engagement around their Facebook pages, et cetera. So these are different ways that people are using social in a new format. It's not just PR and it's not just marketing. It's all over the, the board in terms of how they're doing it. And it's a big data issue. If, if the data keeps growing and growing like it is, then how do you get through it? Well, it's, it's tools like Lexalytics. And that's it. So. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, thanks. Um, on there, you had themes versus uh, phrases, I think. What, what, what was the difference between those two, which I guess Lex Flex function were you calling for each one? So the, there's a the, the themes function is actually kind of broad general um, categories where the phrases are, they're trying to pick the, what's the key phrase of that particular passage. So if, what you're doing is you're kind of creating uh, kind of a broader subject category. I like, I use the phrase as one for for sake of uh, picking one of the two to, to show up here. Uh, when or if do you batch into collections? Like, Do you use the collection functionality of Salience? Uh, now, like you're, now you're getting into the, the technical side, which I'm not a technical guy. So, so, I mean, not even necessarily technically, but just is it always one tweet at a time? I mean, are there times where customers want to just take a, a broader view? Well, uh, um, if, if I'm understanding your question, if you're saying so we have like post-level type of data where actually the individual posts up to aggregate views? Right. Well, that all, most of what I showed you there was the aggregate view of the data itself. Um, only, only when you start getting down into that, that river of news do you actually get into the post-level data. Um, so that's, I don't know if I answered your question, but that's... Uh, so your negative example um, showed sick as a phrase. Yes. And uh, sick can be positive or it can be sick negative. Can be really <laughs> yes. um, my son is 10, and so sick tends to be positive. Not sure yes. why. <laughs> yes. Um, do you have any situations where your customers would like to customize the behavior of various tools, and how do you manage that, given that you have a bunch of different plugins? Yes. Well, that's actually part of what... This is a, an alpha product for us right now, so we're actually taking... 
um, some of the concepts that we're, we're building in this alpha product and trying to tweak, tweak how do we actually make hand sentiment that is industry specific, is it customer specific, et cetera. So there, there is some tweaking to do before we get it out into the, into the marketplace. That's a good question though. Hi, are you doing anything to segment the data from like, let's say, a B2B conversation versus the larger pipe data? Are you doing that with any customers? I, we do have a lot of B2B customers. So yeah. it's all a matter of how do you, you know, there's a, there's a variety of different tools you can use to actually start segment things, you know, segment data down. It's, so this, the strategy is involved around search and how you actually slice the data. Um, does it actually metadata and say this is B2B versus B2C? It doesn't really do that. You need to use the, the variety of tools to get there. Any others? Thanks, Ed. Thank you very much. Yeah.